to do is set up some kind of thing, introduction into this, as far as the title is concerned. Uh, now, how do you want uh, me to do, say something like... Central? Oh, we thought we'd call it the Central Perspectivity. Or, or simply say Central Perspectivity? Yeah, or just, yeah. In a projective plane, the basic elements are points and lines. The set of all lines through a point is called a pencil. The set of all points on a line is called a range. The correspondence between two distinct ranges established by the lines of a pencil is called a central perspectivity. A perspectivity has a center, not on either range. It maps the points of one range onto the points of the other. It maps the point of intersection onto itself. This point is invariant under the perspectivity. If a perspectivity maps P onto P prime, Q onto Q prime, I onto I, R onto R prime, and so on, then P, Q, I, R are said to be perspective from center O with P prime, Q prime, I, and R prime. P, Q, I, R, perspective with P prime, Q prime, I, R prime from center O. Given two distinct ranges, and on each, any two points not at the point of intersection, there is a perspectivity from M to M prime, which maps A onto A prime, B onto B prime. In fact, this is the only perspectivity mapping A, B onto A prime, B prime. In other words, a perspectivity is determined by any two of its non-invariant points and their images. It follows, then, that it is not always possible to find a perspectivity that will map three given points of one range onto three given points of another. But what about a succession 
or product of perspectivities. If a product of two perspectivities is tried, the three given points of the initial range are mapped onto an auxiliary range. But this still leaves the problem of mapping one triple onto another. However, if the first perspectivity maps one of the given points directly onto its final image, the problem is then reduced to one of mapping only two points onto two points. And this can be done by the second perspectivity. Therefore, an arbitrary triple of one range can be mapped onto an arbitrary triple of another by means of a product of perspectivities. Any product of perspectivities is called a projectivity. In the previously constructed projectivity, ABC is said to be projective with A prime, B prime, C prime. A, B, C, projective with A prime, B prime, C prime. This notation doesn't show the perspectivities, for there are different perspectivities whose products map A, B, C onto A prime, B prime, C prime. But do different products actually define different mappings? A mapping consists essentially of ordered pairs, of points and their respective images. Different products represent the same mapping if they yield the same set of ordered pairs. In the case of a perspectivity, the product consists of only one factor. The mapping in general is completely determined by only two of its ordered pairs. All the ordered pairs of the perspectivity are determined once two are known. But how many ordered pairs determine a projectivity? The answer is 
at least three because any three collinear points can be mapped onto any three collinear points by means of a projectivity. If the answer is precisely three, then there is only one projectivity that maps WXY onto W prime, X prime, Y prime. In which case, Z prime must coincide with Z star. Z prime and Z star can be distinct only if there is more than one projectivity that maps the first given triple onto the second. And this would mean that more than three ordered pairs are necessary to determine a projectivity uniquely. The question of how much information uniquely determines a projectivity is so basic to the development of the subject that its answer is often called the fundamental theorem of projective geometry. In addition to studying the mappings themselves, it is of interest to look at the lines that join corresponding points. In the case of a perspectivity, this set of lines is just a pencil. But in a general projectivity, the lines envelop what appears to be a familiar locus.